today we will learn about the basics of Saros cycle, its causes, mechanism and how it is used to easily predict eclipses of the sun and moon. The ancient astrologers and astronomers found that solar and lunar eclipses are not random as it appears but is periodic and can be predicted beforehand. There are two nodes of lunar orbit due to its tilt from the ecliptic. They are called the ascending and the descending nodes. For eclipses to occur, the moon must be at one of its nodes at the time of new moon or full moon. But due to precession, the nodes of the moon are not stationary, but moves backwards upon the moon's orbit and completes one revolution with respect to the moon in 18 years and 219 days nearly. This means with respect to the moon, its nodes are at the same position every 18 years 219 days. The moon revolves in anti-clockwise direction around the earth and the nodes revolve in the clockwise direction. So the moon meets the same node before it completes one revolution and it comes out to be 27 days, 5 hours and 6 minutes and is called the nautical revolution of the moon. The moon actually completes one revolution with respect to the sun and earth in 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes. This is called the synodic revolution of the moon. Now imagine the earth is going around the sun in anti-clockwise direction and the nodes are revolving around the earth in clockwise direction. So the sun, earth and the nodes come back to the same position with respect to each other before completion of one year, that is 346 days, 14 hours, 52 minutes. This is called the synodic revolution of the node. Remember, for eclipses to reoccur, not only the sun, earth and the nodes must be in the same position but also the moon. Now it so happens that 19 synodical revolutions of the node after which the period the sun and node would be alike situated at equal to 223 synodic revolutions of the moon. This means 223 into 29.53059 which gives us 6585.3211 days. This is if an eclipse is occurring today, an identical eclipse would occur after 6585.3211 days. This indicates that the Saros period is not an integer number of days but contains a fraction of one third of a day. Thus, each successive eclipse in a Saros series occurs about 8 hours later in the day. In the case of an eclipse of the Sun, this means that the region of visibility shifts westwards about 120 degrees, so about one third of the way around the globe and the two eclipses will not be visible from the same place on earth. In case of an eclipse of the moon, the next eclipse might still be visible from the same location as long as the moon is above the horizon. If you found this video helpful, then you can click the like button and subscribe my channel Astro Shakti for more.